When do you learn about money? From your good experiences with money or from your bad experiences with money? Well, in this episode, consider these two numbers, 500 and 2,350. What I'm talking about, 500 is how many scriptures and verses are in the Bible about faith and prayer. But over 2,350 verses are in the Bible about money. So in this episode of the 7 First Squad, we're going to be discussing God, money, and you. Starting in 3, 2, 1. Let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Cipolla here, hailing it to you from the Money Smart home office here. And uh, guys, what you have requested through our Vlogmas series is every Sunday night we experimented. Should we talk about money from a biblical standpoint? And you said an overwhelming yes, please. Let's continue this. So uh, we're going to be unpacking this Bible and scripture as it relates to entrepreneurship, money, uh, becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire for his glory, not necessarily your glory. But uh, what am I talking about there for his glory? Well, think about this real quick. I believe that number one, I'm just a simple steward of money. What am I talking about? It's not my money. Here's a definition of what being a steward is. A steward is a person who manages another's property or financial affairs, one who administers anything as the agent of another or others. You see, a long time ago, I uh, was very frustrated with finances, very frustrated with money. Every time I got a paycheck, literally within 30 seconds after writing, this, I'm dating myself here, literally after 30 seconds after writing out four or five different checks, yes, I said checks, to pay my bills for the month, my money was gone. Peace, see ya. And I'm holding my breath for the next 14 days because as a sergeant in the United States Marine, we got paid every first and the 15th of the month. I was getting paid $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marine Corps, stationed in one of the wealthiest places in the United States, which was Southern California, Orange County, California. Now, think about this real quick. If I believe that this is my money, my money, my money, selfish, 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 me, 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 well, I'm stuck in that area. I'm stuck in this whole world of me, myself, and I. But once I got aware that when I came into the faith and I understood that money was simply just a tool, it was not a reflection of me, that uh, I wasn't supposed to be judged by money. I realized that I'm just a simple steward of money. And I realized a few things. When much is given, also much can be taken away. I just happen to be the guy that's in charge of the $20,000 year income, or the $50,000 year income, or the $100,000 year income, and the guys that's in charge of this business, that's in charge of the job. I've been entrusted with a job, with occupation, with a business. I'm just a steward. I'm looking over this and making the most of it with what I have. With that being said, at any given moment, all of these things can potentially be taken away. There's been many times in my life where I realized that, man, uh, uh, you got so high on your horse and uh, God said, look, you know what? If you don't want to learn about it, if you don't want to give it, you don't want to be a proper steward about it, boom, I'm going to take it away. And he removed blessings from my life. And I realized, as we discussed in a previous video, that what you've been given with the least and what you do with the least, then he can entrust you with the most. So bottom line, I started looking at money simply not as mine, as, as ownership, but as stewardship. That I have to own the, if anything, own the responsibility that I'm in charge of this, that ultimately God is in charge. I just happen to be looking over it for the time being. Which leads me to my second point. When I first was starting to manage my own salary, my military paycheck, I was starting to manage my first commissions when I left the military, got involved in insurance commission sales, when I started operating my own business. How are you supposed to manage your money? Was it best guess or is it biblical principles? As I mentioned earlier, over 500 verses are in the Bible about faith and prayer, but over 2,000, could you believe this? Over 2,350 verses are there about managing money and the stewardship of what you've been entrusted with. So, with that being said, something that uh, the Bible talks about as soon as you receive money. It talks about this thing called tithe. Tithe? What are we talking about tithe? Here's a definition of tithe here. Let's unpack this in Leviticus. Here in verse 30 it says, A tithe, which means a portion, of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the tree, belongs to the Lord. Belongs to who? The Lord. It is holy to the Lord. And check this out, the next scripture in verse 31, it says, if a man redeems any of his tithe, he must add a fifth of the value to it. The entire tithe of the herd and flock 
every tenth animal that passes under the shepherd's rod will be holy to the Lord. So God says, listen, I'm going to give you something. Hey, I'm going to give you this. Hey, steward, I'm going to give you something. You can enjoy this. You can enjoy this. Have fun with, out of the ten, have fun with the nine. But one, <laughs> one belongs to God. And oftentimes here in America, guess what we get caught up in? We get caught up in this thing called consumerism. Keeping up with the Joneses, which is evident every time holidays comes around, which is evident every time Christmas shopping season goes by. Listen, we're talking about tithing now in the month of January. It's just not a season of giving. It's just not you just give and present and serve other people in December during the holidays, but it's an all the time thing. It's not just a one time, one season thing. It's an all the, all the time thing. God wants you to tithe because one, in this scripture, he says of the 10 sheep, one belongs to God. So if you've got a dollar, if you've got a hundred dollars, right? If you've got a hundred dollars and some people say it's 10% or 20% or 1% or everything you got, a portion of that happens to be God's. And if you spend it according to that scripture in, in, um, in verse 31, you must add value to it. Are you adding value to it by sitting at home unnecessarily a PlayStation 5 or buying three, four, five cars that, that you don't need or, or, or buying things that, uh, you know, it's just going to sit in the uh, closet with tags still hanging on because in the back of your mind, you're still regretting that purchase. Is it adding value? Is that purchase, is it adding value? We're going to get to assets and liabilities here in a second, but whatever you're spending money on, is it adding value? Is it growing? Is it serving? And speaking of the tithe, some of you guys may say, man, you know, I can't believe I got to give to God, man. Oh, I got to take uh, whatever God says, uh, his tithe, fine. You're reluctant to do it. Well, God says something else as well. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse six and seven, he says this. <laughs> you may or may not like this. He says in verse six, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. So that goes into your tithings. If you want to be cheap about it, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get cheap return. If you want to be generous about it, you're also going to get a generous return. Let's read this now in verse 7. It says like this too, in terms of attitude. It says this, each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion. <laughs> For God loves a cheerful giver. Listen, here's the thing. Here, here, here's my resolution to this. Some of you guys are convicted that should I give 10%, should I give 20%, should I give 1%, should I give 50%, should I give everything I have? Well, Scripture just says He wants you to give with a cheerful heart. He wants to give generously, not reluctantly. He doesn't want you to be cheap about it. He wants you to be giving with your heart full of joy and happiness, like you're happy to give to the Lord. Attitude. Attitude is your altitude. So when people are thinking about, man, you know, uh, uh, this is uh, something that I have to do, less than I think, and this might rub some of you wrong, especially if many people in the church say, well, you got to give 10%, give 10%. I don't read 10% in the scripture. I, I just read a cheerful heart and give generously. And sometimes, again, I might be rubbing some of you guys wrong, but when it comes to actual percentage-wise, I've just seen, sadly, religion take over and have people convicted that have to give a percentage. Listen, God owns everything. And not only is he going to bless you, shoot, he's going to bless that pastor. He's going to bless that church. He's going to bless the congregation, the body of Christ. He's going to bless everybody if it's done with a cheerful heart. Sometimes people feel they're relegated to a certain percentage. By the way, drop your thoughts in the comment section below. You may or may not agree with me, but here, here's my thing. Whatever you decide to give, whatever I decide to give, I'm walking my path. You're probably walking yours too as well. All, all good. But here's the thing. When I'm giving in a church, I feel great about whatever I decide to give. It's done with generosity. It's given with a joyful heart. It's meant with nothing to expect back in return. I'm giving it because it's my duty as a steward to give. And now the second part of not just your best guess, but biblical principles, and second after tithes, is then give unto Caesar. Oh, man. Now this scripture I'm about to read was, give, was written during the New in the New Testament, and uh, it's, a, it's a question that the religious leaders were asking Jesus because they're saying, should we pay taxes or not? Should we, should we be stuck in the system? Even though you're talking about, Lord, that we're not a kingdom of this earth, right? So Jesus, so if we're not a kingdom of this earth, should we pay taxes of the earth? Well, here's what he says in scripture. 
in Matthew, he reads like this. Give to Caesars what is Caesars and give to God what is God's. So you like living in the United States of America? You like living in your country, wherever you're watching this? If you like the country that you're in and there's certain things that are provided by this country to help you be a citizen in that country, we'll give unto God what is God's and give unto your country what is your country, your Caesar. In this case, the United States of America, if you're watching this here in the US. So yes, you must pay taxes. But with that being said, I wouldn't be so encouraged to pay more than your fair share. We got other videos about that type of stuff, but the third thing is, the third person you should give to. So number one, you give to God's. Number two, you give unto Caesars. And the third person you give to, check this out, is you. You have to reinvest and save for yourself. You should not be living paycheck to paycheck. You should save, you should invest, you should have this money grow. And here's the thing, why people don't allow that to happen. Let's go into number three here. Faith versus fear. Well, Matt, you know, I can, I can barely make ends meet. Man, this whole pandemic, this whole COVID thing. I know, uh, by the way, this is, not, this is not the first time a plague or a pandemic or tough times has came on God's people. But uh, at this very moment, you watching this video right now can either tap into your faith or you can tap into your fear. Let's read what scripture has to say about this. Let's go to Malachi. Malachi chapter three, verse 10, it says like this. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Remember that portion that's God's? Yes. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Check this out now. He says, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have enough room for it. Here's an opportunity for you guys. When you're in this crossroads, what do I buy into? Do I buy into my faith or do I buy into my fear? Well, Matt, you know, if I don't pay this right now, you know, the collections are going to shut off my lights. I know. But God says, give unto God what is God's. Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. It's not his fault that you overextended yourself on your bills and you stopped giving to you. There's a big problem that a lot of people have in America today. They make $1,000, they spend $1,500. They make $10,000, they spend $15,000. Make $100,000, they spend $150,000. It's a big challenge we have when it comes to biblical principles. Because why? Because we got caught up in marketing. We get caught up in social media and things that you can buy, all the different things you can click. Think about this real quick. How many different apps do you have out there right now to get your money sent to somebody else? Think about that real quick. You got Venmo, you got PayPal, you got, uh, what's a cash app, you got Apple Pay. You got all these different things to send money. Zoom, you send it overseas. Here's a better question. How many different ways do you have money coming into your account? <laughs> you have so many ways to have your money leave, but you don't have so many things to come into your account, which then buys into more of your fear because you're fearful that you have so much money going out because you haven't extended your faith to say, hey, how can I plug these leaks? This is God talking to you right now. That certain things, if you are watching this and it's rubbing you the wrong way, well, maybe this video is being used right now to help you reassess how you're actually spending money for 2021. Think about this real quick. You got money coming in from the stimulus money, right? How fast did that money go? Did it grow for you or did it go for you? Oftentimes it went for you. Why? Because the way you're programmed, the way many people are programmed about money to buy more into their fear versus their faith. Here's the thing about faith. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So what is faith? I don't see where I'm getting my next paycheck. I know it's coming. I just don't know how. Listen, if there's anything I've learned by becoming an entrepreneur, if there's anything I learned about stepping off in faith and and being in a very uncomfortable zone of my life is that you get so close to what God wants you to do in your life. Because you don't know when the next customer is going to come in. You don't know when the next client is going to come in. You know sometimes how the bills come in. But I swear, man, these principles and so many people follow these principles right now. They, they don't even follow the word. But they're using God's principles and they're being blessed. Think about real quick, quick side note. Think about what the CEO of Barstool Sports is doing right now. He's raising money. I think he's raised like $20, $25 million as an entrepreneur. He's calling out, hey guys, let's raise money for the public. Let's raise money for uh, local businesses. Let's, lo let's, let's put our money together. Let's, let, let's galvanize and put our efforts together as fellow entrepreneurs, not waiting on the government because I'm buying into my faith that we can come together and unify and bless business owners and help them through these trying times. And guess what happened? Boom, $20, $25 million is being raised. 
Not because a government cut a check, but he exercised his faith and people responded and the Lord blessed them. Back to Malachi. God says, test me. He says, test me in this. When's the last time you tested God? When's the last time? Okay, God, boom, I'm going to cut this check. I'm testing you now because you told me in your scripture. He you said, if I test you, boom, you're going to open up the windows of heaven and bless me. Woo! It has to go into this and not buying into your fear. Second thing about faith is this. Let's go into Luke chapter 6, verses 38. It reads like this. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use it, it will be measured to you. Man, you think about these scriptures. How many times have you read a scripture like this? I remember when I started reading the Bible from the lens of an entrepreneur, from the lens of somebody managing money. I can't believe how God was blessing me to say, hey, God's saying, trust me. Don't trust you. You're limited. Trust me. I'm unlimited. When I'm looking at these type of things, buying into faith is a muscle that must be exercised. Can't tell you how many times people pray for a blessing on Sunday mornings, but as soon as it doesn't instantly come in their way, it doesn't instantly appear like popcorn or a microwave being done, oh, I guess I'm going to buy back into my fear. Can't happen that way. You got to keep with the faith. You got to say, let me keep praying, even though your answer isn't right away. Just because it's not right now doesn't mean your prayer isn't coming through. And number four, let's add some practicality to this. You need to build the difference between assets and liabilities. Asset is something that you, 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 you build through your savings and your investments, through your income, thing that adds value to you. What are liabilities? Liabilities are things that take away from you. Think about this real quick. You want to build a box okay, of assets. Here's your income coming in, income coming in. But think about this real quick. Look at your checking account. How many withdrawals do you have? How many charges do you have as compared to how many deposits you have? So what scripture is attempting to get you to do, it's trying to get you to say, hey, why don't you plant more assets from your income? Well, Matt, you, know, you don't get it. I, I, I can barely make ends meet with the income that I make. Okay, fine. Which we'll talk about in the next point, which is increasing your income. Why are you settling for a, a job that barely paying you the bills? Why are you waiting for a politician? Why are you put, placing your faith in the White House? Why are you placing your faith in a politician to cut you a stimulus check, to cut you unemployment benefits? Is that really where your resources come from? Do you realize where the resources originally come from? Who owns all that? Let me remind you, it comes from the Lord. Let's check this out. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 18. It reads like this. Do not muzzle the ox while it is treading out the grain. And the worker deserves his wages. Here's the thing. If you're not a worker, you don't deserve your wages. So if you're getting a check and you didn't work for it, you got to ask yourself, is that, is that a blessing that you're really hoping for? Because it'll quickly evaporate. Because guess who appreciates their wages? Workers. And if not working towards it, you might want to double check. How come you're not getting more assets coming your way? If you're working towards it, hey, maybe I need to ask my boss for a raise. How can I get a raise? How can I get access to put more value? And if I create more value, how can I get paid more? These are some of the tough questions a lot of people don't want to ask. They say, well, I've been here for six months. I've been here for a year. I've been here for five years. I deserve a raise. <laughs> Listen, you don't deserve things unless you're adding value to it. And more importantly, do you ask for it? Because you have not, because you asked not, because you settled for something and you don't have enough boldness inside. You know what? Can I take charge of this department? How can I make this better? Do I need to be reminded? Do I need to be micromanaged? If so, then you'll deserve a raise. You deserve what you get. And you can't expect something to give you something out of nowhere if you didn't add value to it. Question you got to ask yourself at this very moment, fellow believer, or soon to be thinking about these type of things. Are you adding value? Are you increasing? So therefore the Lord can bless you and are operating in faith. So let's read from Proverbs, which is my favorite book in the Bible. It's written by the wisest and richest king who ever lived. And um, increasing income is going to require a lot of thought process, a lot of questioning you ask yourself. And more important, as you make money, as you are changing and modifying your habits, instead of just having your best guess, Versus now, following biblical principles is going to involve this. You're not going to like this word. Discipline. <clears throat> I just said it. But what does the Bible say about discipline? Chapter uh, 12, verse 1. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. 
but he who hates correction is stupid. <laughs> yes, that's, hey guys, I'm just reading from scripture. This is a new international version translation of the Bible. But let's go here to also to the New Testament. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. It reads like this. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. It says trained by it. It didn't say instantly gratification by it. It says trained by it. It means it's over and over and over. Listen, for those of you watching this video, if you want lasting wealth, you want to create generational wealth, you want money working for you for the long term, and guys, these are principles that's transcended time. It's transcended humankind. I'm just not talking about the latest investment strategy here that we just got in some website. This is in scripture. These are godly principles that help you get to the next level of your life as it relates to God, money, and you. And if you're looking at these type of things and you're looking at this from an objective standpoint, maybe this is the point for you right now as you're watching this video. God's trying to tell you, please improve. He wants to bless you. He wants to do some mighty things for you, for his benefit, to expand his kingdom. And he's going to use you as his messenger. He's going to use you as his steward, but you got to be wise about it. Otherwise, he can't use you. And you're going to be limiting your blessing, not only to the people that you love and care about, but you're going to be limiting your blessing to future generations of folks in your last name that's not even here yet. So when I'm looking at these type of things, I wonder, are you thinking about this right now? Are you trying to change your mind about how you perceive money? Because how you see things is how you do things. And when I realized I shouldn't be up to my ways to do it, the best guess strategy, but follow godly principles, it started changing my life, and if it can change me, I know my brothers and sisters that's watching this right now, it can change you if you let him help you. That being said, guys, drop your thoughts, drop your comments. I'll let me know what you're thinking, some follow-ups that you might have. Uh, I've been enjoying these uh, with you, the engagement that we have. As I wrap up, a couple of videos I'd love for you guys to check out if this intrigues you to be a wiser student, to be a bigger blessing for his kingdom. Is number one, how the Bible made me a millionaire. And please don't take it out of context. I want to be a millionaire, not for me, but for him. So therefore, you can spread out and be a huge messenger, a big steward for God's glory. And the second video for you to watch here is a conversation I had with Pastor Rashawn Bay, who made six figures in income as an entrepreneur last year, made $62,000 last month in December. Check out what he has to say about God, money, and you, why you shouldn't be ashamed about making a lot of money. That being said, guys, again, drop your thoughts, your comments below, follow up questions, your feedback. Love to address them. If you're watching this on Facebook and you enjoyed this episode, please click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, please click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.